Hey guys, Jay Young with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video a part of your day. Have you guys ever asked yourself the question, why the heck do I have so many weeds? Whether it's pigweeds, kochia, I don't know what you face. Those are the two big ones we face as long, or as well as Russian thistle, Canadian thistle, uh, Texas windmill grass is one that's kicking my tail right now in our dry land, uh, and bindweed is a big one that our county fights. But have you ever thought to just get down and ask them, what are you doing here? Well, that's a topic that Nicole Masters covers in her book, For the Love of Soil. I really love this book. And in the second to last chapter of this book, or third to last chapter of this book, the chapter's called Read Your Weeds. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. What is it that our weeds are telling us uh, in our fields and what ways can we combat these weeds outside of using chemicals or tillage? So let's roll the intro and get into today's topic. And this is what we all feel. Let's just not deny it. Something pulls and it tears in the deepest place. This is what we all know. Why must we still fight it? It's time to open our eyes and acknowledge the writing on the wall. Today's episode is sponsored by Regen Ag Lab. Regen Ag Lab is the lab that we trust with our soil. So like I brought up in the very beginning of this video, you can get a lot of the information that I'm talking about in today's video by reading Nicole Masters' book, For the Love of Soils. Uh, she's a, a great person and a huge advocate for regenerative agriculture and soil health principles. And so I wanna make sure that I give her the respect she deserves for giving me the idea for this video. The first thing we need to do is understand the, the context of weeds within farming. Uh, weeds tell us a story, and if we can read the weeds correctly and understand why they are growing, then we can be better equipped to, to uh, try to control them naturally, not just always tilling them or using chemicals. Think of them as weeds' natural messengers. They're sending us a message about what the condition of our soil is in. And so today I wanna to talk about my weeds and what my weeds are telling me about the condition of my soil and what I can do as someone who's in regenerative agriculture to better control these weeds in, in our system. So let's decipher what my weeds are telling me. Let's take this circle for example. Now, this particular circle was corn last year. Right now it is in a cover crop mix that was planted in April so that I would have grazing here in July after we come off of the oats. So what are the weeds that I see in this field and what are they telling me? Well, right off the bat, I have, like I said, a high amount of, of pigweeds, kochia, and then I'm also seeing Canadian thistle, which I don't see on a lot of the rest of my farm. And then I also have Russian thistle, which is something that's fairly common. So what are all of those weeds telling me? They all have the same thing in common. They're all uh, summer broadleaves with a deep taproot. So that's telling me that I have compact soils, which is frustrating because we've been doing regenerative agriculture for a while now. And that was confirmed because I got back our Haney test uh, that we did on some of these irrigated circles and we have poor soil respiration, which is an indicator that we have tighter compact soil. So the Haney test is telling us that we have tight compact soils because of our low soil respiration. These tap, deep tap rooted weeds are telling us that we have tighter compact soils. And the fact that I've got corn out here at a higher population than sunflowers. But if you look in this shot, predominantly what you're seeing is, is a whole bunch of sunflowers, even though there's less plants out, or less sunflower plants out here than corn plants. They're doing better in the conditions that are out here than what I, what I have. So here's a couple of things to think about when reading your weeds. The first thing that we can do is we can look at the situation we have and rather than try to fight against what I have, I can take, instead of growing corn, I can take a year and do sunflowers because I'm seeing in this particular soil and what where my soil is at right now, they would probably benefit from a whole field full of, of, of sunflowers interseed with cover crops. Uh, and I bet the, the sunflowers would do really good 
in my soil, in my situation. So rather than fight against what I have, why not? Why don't I go with what my soil, what with what the current condition of my soil is, grow some sunflowers, intercede some cover crops within those sun, sunflowers, and try to improve my soil health that way. So that's the first benefit that we get from reading our weeds. It's telling us a story of what will thrive in our environment. The second thing I want to cover now that we've read our weeds is what is the solution? How are you going to change our soils so, so that they're in a condition to grow the, the cash crop that we like to grow, which is corn in our environment? How can we change things? Well, there's a couple things that we do need, we can do. Since we have the ability to do cover crops is continue to have plant plants that have a deep taproot that will help break up some of that compaction. That will help us out with our soil respiration and will discourage those weeds from growing and, and will create an environment that's less conducive to the weeds for them to grow. Now, that's something I've been doing. I've always added sunflowers to this. I've always had deep taprooted plants or I've, I've gotten cereal rye in here to break up that compaction. So why would I still have poor soil respiration? It's also an indicator that I'm not doing a very good job of rotational grazing. That's one thing that I'm kind of leaning towards. I do have an irrigated circle that um, it had a very similar response as far as having poor respiration. It currently has wheat growing out there. So I don't know what the situation is on that particular irrigated circle because I haven't been hardly grazing at all. But that's something I'm gonna look at is, is how can I do better with my, the, my current rotational grazing patterns. So that's what my weeds are telling me. Uh, your environment and your situation might be telling you a completely different story. I encourage you guys to read Nicole's book. There are six uh, indicators that kind of tell you why weeds are germinating. I just covered one uh, with the compact soils. And so I encourage you guys to read her book. Uh, there's a whole bunch of good information in this book uh, to go over. And then in the end of the book, she gives some remedies in the appendix of the book. And one of those things in, the, in there was the weed extract. And so specifically with your deeper taprooted weeds like Canadian thistle, um, they've done it with Canadian thistle. I don't know that they've done it with Palmer amaranth, but I, I'm, I, I tried it this year with Palmer amaranth and I'm gonna pull up or cut up some of our uh, Canadian thistle and do a weed extract. But basically what you, what, what you do is you take your weeds and you put them in a barrel. We took a clean IBC tote cut the lid off, filled it full of pigweeds. Caleb did, I didn't. Uh, got a bunch of pigweeds, we put them in a, in a uh, IBC tote, you know, so anything with a tap at the bottom of it and you press those weeds down with a heavy weight and as those break down six months to a year, um, all those juices um, will be in the bottom of that, that container. Then you take that out, make an extract and specifically like with Canadian thistle, you spray it where your problem areas of Canadian thistle are. I don't really understand this whole process, but from what I, I remember, because they have such a deep taproot is they, they're going down and they're pulling up, you know, nutrients deep within your soil. Well, those are within your plant. And so as your plant is breaking down, those enzymes from your plant will send out different signals in your soil that will be indicators to pigweeds or Canadian thistle or whatever you've done the weed extract with to not germinate. This has worked well sometimes and other times it hasn't worked well according to what Nicole's seen. So it's something that we're trying and hopefully I'll have a video for that for you guys in the future. These are all things I'm still learning the process in, but I wanted to share with you guys, I wanna share with you guys what we're learning in, in this whole process. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you leave in the comments below uh, topics that you want to see covered in a future video and keep pursuing soil health. This is Jay Young out.